Well, welcome everybody uh, online and welcome everybody uh, in the room uh, to this, which is going to be the penultimate uh, King's Maritime History Seminar, and I'll explain about that uh, at the end. Remind me if I forget, uh, but tonight's order of business is, first of all, to welcome you here. So you are at King's College London, of course, uh, you are, but you're also being hosted by the Lawton Naval Unit here in the Department of War Studies. And as it happens, it's the Michael Howard Center for the History of War. But it is, in fact, the British Commission for Maritime History, King's Maritime History Seminar uh, that you're at. And we put that on with pleasure, with the support uh, of the Society of Economic Research and Lloyd's Register. So we are well backed, uh, and you are all very welcome. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce tonight's. Um, Speaker, I guess he's a speaker. You're not just a well, I'm a moderator, really. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight, tonight's orator, uh, uh, Roy <laughs> Fenton, who is, uh, uh, of course, a familiar face, uh, a trustee of the British Commission for Maritime uh, History, and also a very respected uh, maritime uh, historian. Uh, but with a difference, because Roy dances and Roy sings, and Roy is going to bring at least some of these talents, I think, to tonight's uh, 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 lecture, which is on, well, it's on sea shanties, and I'll leave it to him to explain what it's about, and I'll hand over to you, Roy, with thanks. House lights, can we? Yes, I'll yeah. do that. If you, if you sit there, I'll do my magic behind the scenes. And so that mouse, um, now it's either, uh, yeah, it's either this, or it doesn't work in the mouse <coughs> down here, and, and you can do it that way. Um, do you see the arrows down here? I'm hoping. Shall we just test? I'll try. Yeah, no, those yeah. work. Those okay. Work. Right. Okay. Right. Um, we'll glass of water. Thank you. Yankee blood boats, bucko mates, hungry bitches, little Sally racket, and a hog eye man. Welcome to the not always politically correct world of sea shanties. That one probably goes back. That's it, yes. Sea shanties. A quick definition work songs which maximize the efficiency of muscle power on sailing vessels. These shanties aren't, not all sailors' songs are shanties. Shanties are basically work songs. Now, traditionally, people start presentations about shanties by explaining that they are not experts. Now, that's not surprising. Frankly, the experts died out at least 100 years ago. They were the shanty men guys who were employed on board ship, seamen themselves, but were given a relatively easy time by the leading shanties. Um, my qualifications <coughs> for this talk don't extend to ever having sailed on a square rigged ship. And in terms of musical abilities, I think they were rightly summed up by a lady at one of our music sessions, which was your ability as a musician, Roy, extend to rhythm and enthusiasm. <laughs> so I can claim a degree of enthusiasm for the shanty, which arose when I was in the sort of folk club scene in the 1960s. Um, I've asked a couple of friends to come along tonight to help out with the singing. Um, and basically, I just hope we can share some of our enthusiasm for shanties with you all. Audience participation, you might ask. It's not just allowed, it's expected. <laughs> you don't sing these things quietly. We'll, we'll try and respect the rest of the university as well. If they come down and knock on the door, we'll do it a bit more quietly. Um, as this talk has got sort of pretensions to being about maritime history, in fact, it's more about maritime folklore than maritime history, um, my subtitle was The Sea Shanty and Its Economic, Social and Cultural Context. And what I'm going to talk about basically is 
why they happened, why they were they came into being, how they contributed to the life on board the ship, something about their history, and a bit about the survival of shanties long after they were redundant as work songs. In terms of maritime history, I can probably do no better than quote Roy Palmer, who was a folklorist and singer himself. Shanties reflect only preoccupations of sailors from sex to sentiment and from escapism to vitriolic complaints. They provide some of the best portraits there are of life on the sail. So I, gave, I headlined my talk, Sex and Drink and Rock and Roll, which is probably why half the people here came. Um, <laughs> it's illustrated mainly by photographs from a wonderful book that Eric Newby produced. He sailed on the Finnish bark Moshaloo in the 1930s and frankly didn't enjoy it that much. So it's quite a, a good antidote to all the, the, the stories about the glorious days of the sail. Um, he published these in the book called Learning the Ropes, which is really rather good. Let's talk first about the economic bit of sea shanties. Well, once they get rich and famous, or certainly get rich, Ship owners are often good philanthropists. Um, think of people like William Burrell giving his art collection to Glasgow. Um, Cardiff tramp owner Reardon Smith, who helped found the National Museum of Wales. And more recently, the descendants of Alfred Holt of the Blue Funnel Line, who set up the Outward Bound School in the Second World War. They were less generous to the people who worked with them and providing their fortune. In fact, they wanted to get the maximum amount of work for the minimum pay. Be interested to know this tradition is still alive, certainly in piano ferries. They also they realized that men worked harder with the help of music. As somebody once said, a good shanty is worth 10 men on the road. And it's got to be said much, much cheaper. Captains were therefore encouraged to employ a seaman as a shanty singer. Let's meet a real shanty singer, really quite a famous one, John Short of Watch It, who was Cecil Sharp's main source for information about shanties. Interestingly, two different people collected shanties from John Short, um, Sharp themselves and a guy called Perry, and they both they got different versions of the same shanty form which suggests that the words, the lyrics of the shanty weren't fixed. They were flexible. Um, John Short had the honor of an obituary in the times when he died in 1933. And also they erected a statue to him on the seafront at Watch It. There he is with another old folky <laughs> who came to pay homage to him and to apologize for the way he saw some of his shanties in the past. Shantyman brought various skills to the job, besides the ability to sing loudly in all weathers. There are really two versions, two actions that you needed to um, shanties for. One was hauling, which is actually pulling on ropes, braces, sheets, whatever they were called, which needed short verses with choruses to co coordinate the pull. For instance, a shanty man might sing, Boney was a warrior, and the crew would go, Way hey ya, a warrior, a terrier, John France, what? So they were coordinating the, the actual actions on the road. The other form of needed action that needed shanties was heaving. That's a general term, including um, walking around capstans, um, acting windlasses. Pumps. It needed a slower tempo and a more longer drawn out chorus to accompany the work. Often there was shanties with narratives involved we used for that. Sorry, oh, you said something about putting a light out in the house lights. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Another skill was improvisation. Certainly with the heaving shanties, pumping, for instance, could go on for hours. Same as with the capstan winches. So the, the, the song had to be stretched out 
to cover the entire job. So there was a degree of improvisation there. So for our first song, I'm going to ask Neil to sing a song which where improvisation was called for. Very old shanty called Roll the Chariot Along. Quite simply, whatever the shanty man sang, the crew, which is going to be you, will repeat it, then sing the chorus. Neil, take it away. I've got the words on the screen, so I'll move on. Oh, a drop of Nelson's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Oh, oh a drop, drop of Nelson's blood, blood wouldn't do us any harm. Oh, a drop of Nelson's blood wouldn't do us any harm. And we'll all hang on behind. And we'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. And we'll all hang on behind. Oh, a plate of Irish stew wouldn't do us any harm. Oh, a plate of Irish stew wouldn't do us any harm. Oh, a plate of Irish stew wouldn't do us any harm. And we'll all hang on behind. So we'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. And we'll all hang on behind. Oh, a nice fat cook wouldn't do us any harm. Oh, a nice fat cook wouldn't do us any harm. Oh, a nice fat cook. Wouldn't do us any harm, and we'll all hang on behind. And we'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along, and we'll all hang on behind. Oh, a roll in the clover wouldn't do us any harm. Oh, a roll in the clover wouldn't do us any harm. Oh, a roll in the clover wouldn't do us any harm. And we'll all hang on behind. So we'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. And we'll all hang on behind. Oh, a pint on the bar wouldn't do us any harm. Oh, a pint on the bar wouldn't do us any harm. Oh, a pint on the bar wouldn't do us any harm. And we'll all hang on behind. So we'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old. Chariots along, and we'll all hang on behind. Oh, a nice watch below wouldn't do us any harm. Oh, a nice watch below wouldn't do us any harm. Oh, a nice watch below wouldn't do us any harm. And we'll all hang on behind. So we'll roll the old chariots along. We'll roll the old. Chariots along, we'll roll the old chariots along, and we'll all hang on behind. Oh, a drop of Nelson's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Oh, a drop of Nelson's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Oh, a drop of Nelson's blood wouldn't do us any harm, and we'll all hang on behind. So we'll roll the old chariots along. We'll roll the old chariots along. We'll roll the old chariots along. And we'll all hang on the line. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Chanting, and especially the words, weren't just, it weren't just about economics. They also had social aspects on board. A shanty made much more of the song to suit the sailors. Start of a voyage, the crew probably would not know one another. And they come from various backgrounds, various levels of ability, various nationalities, and various languages. So, certainly for newcomers, a shanty man, the singing, helped 
them to feel like sailors. There were bits of sailors law in that, lots about sailors' attitudes to, to work and to women. And the idea was to get a degree of camaraderie, basically, to knit a disparate group of blokes into a working crew. But the older hands, shunted were very much an exercise in nostalgia, talking about shared experiences they had or shared experiences they would like to have had. Um, my three um, themes for shanties, I've got to add sexism to those as well, because frankly, some of the songs were not entirely politically correct. Um, Shanties offered promises to the guy, promises of female company when they get to their destinations, and also warnings about the dangers of female company, dangers to their wealth, and I won't go into this much else, but also dangers to their health. I asked Mech to choose a shanty to sing, and he chose this one, All On Away. Little Sally Racket, All On Away. away. She pulled my best jacket all oh, the way, and she lost the ticket all oh, the way. There the holy eye oh, all the way. way. That's a kitty carson all oh, the way. way. And it with the parson all oh, the way. way. Now she's got a parson all oh, the way. And a holy eye oh, all oh, the way. way. It's all Betty Baker all oh, the way. way. Run off with the quaker, all of the way. Guess I'm on good and shaker, all of the way. With a holy eye, oh, all of the way. Little Lucy Skinner, all of the way. Says she's a beginner, all of the way. But she prefers it to a dinner, all of the way. So a boys and winner, all of the way. Little Dolly Doggett, all of the way. Washes in the bucket, all of the way. She's a whore, but she don't look it, all of the way. With a holy high all of the way. Little Nancy Dawson, all of the way. Got red flannel drawers on, all of the way. Says the poor old bosun, all of the way. And a holy high all of the way. All of them up the top now, all of the way. All of them split up block now, all of the way. And we'll stretch a lot now, all of the way. That would be a lot now, all of the way. Great. We haven't finished with uh, ladies yet. There's one more song about ladies. I'll make the point that another skill of the shantyman was actually fitting the songs to the voyage. Outward bound, he'd be singing about New York girls, about the joys of other, otherwise, about ports like Valparaiso, Calio, and the fun they were going to get rounding, rounding the hall. Homeward bound, they'd be talking about singing about Liverpool Judies, Liverpool pubs, girls on Ratcliffe Highway in London. This um, Neil's going to do now one more day, which is um, somewhat more tender, sentimental song. Even. It's got really lovely tune. So, one more day, Neil. Now's the time to leave her, Johnny. One more day. Did you swear you'd not deceive her, Johnny? One more day. Only one more day, Johnny, Johnny, one more day. I'm going to rock and roll me over, Johnny, one more day. For we're homeward bound tomorrow, Johnny, one more day. And will you leave her without sorrow, Johnny, one more day. Only one more day, Johnny, one more day. Oh, come rock and roll me over, Johnny, one more day. And should she, and should she ever doubt you, Johnny, 
One more day, she would break her heart without you, Johnny. One more day, only one more day, with Johnny. One more day, oh, come rock and roll me over, Johnny. One more day, only one more day together, Johnny. One more day, no more gales, no heavy weather, Johnny. One more day, only one more day, Johnny. One more day, oh, come rock and roll me over, Johnny. One more day, come and roll me to my lover, Johnny. One more day, <coughs> let the starlight be our cover, Johnny. One more day, only one more day, Johnny. One more day, oh, come rock and roll me over, Johnny. One more day, don't you hear the old man growling, Johnny? One more day, don't you hear the first mate howling, Johnny? One more day, only one more day, my Johnny. One more day, oh, come rock and roll me over, Johnny. One more day. Lovely, Neil. Thank you very much. As the word suggests, we're homeward bound tomorrow. That was very much a homeward bound chanting. Next, drink. These were drunken sailors off the Moshaloo in the 1930s, ashore, of course. <coughs> we Many sailors had been drinking before they came on board. In fact, drink was possibly the only reason they did come on board or were carried on board in some cases. They might still have the odd bottle with them, but drink for the crew was very much prohibited during the voyage for reasons of discipline. It was hard enough to get the, the people to work anyway without letting them, letting them drink. It doesn't apply to the officers, of course. They would probably have plenty of drink, but not the crew. Line from a verse from Liverpool Judy's, a smart Yankee packet lies out in the bay, awaiting a fair wind, better get on the way. With all of us sailors so sick and so sore, they've drunk all their whiskey and can't get no more. Pretty much a lament about the lack of drink on board. Two aspects again to that. One is the delights of drink. And there's a wonderfully raucous song here. Um, the seed is going to lead whiskey O, Johnny O. Whiskey is the life of man, always since the world began. Whiskey, whiskey O, Johnny O, rise her up from down below. Whiskey, whiskey, whiskey O, it's up a lot, this yard must go. John, rise her up from down below. Whiskey is the life of man, whiskey from an old tin can. Whiskey, oh, Johnny, oh, rise her up from down below. Whiskey, 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 oh, it's up the lot, this yard must go. Rise her up from down below. Whiskey made me probably close. Whiskey gave me a broken nose. Whiskey, oh, Johnny, oh, rise her up from down below. Whiskey, 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 oh, it's up a lot, this yard must go, John. Rise her up from down below. I thought I heard the old man say, I treat me crew in a decent way. Whiskey, oh, Johnny, oh, rise her up from down below. Whiskey, 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 oh, it's up a lot, this yard must go, John. Rise her up from down below. 
college may be through in a decent way. Give a whiskey twice a day. Whiskey oh Johnny O, rise her up from down below. Whiskey, whiskey, whiskey oh, it's up aloft this yard must go. Rise her up from down below. A glass of whiskey all around. A bottle full of a shanty man. Whiskey oh, Johnny O. Rise her up from down below. Whiskey, 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 oh, it's up a lot. This yard must go. John. Rise her up from down below. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you, thanks. There is, of course, the other aspect of drink what it does to a sailor ashore. Um, I think the, the, the guys would call this guy's situation bully in the alley. And would you believe there's a shanty? <laughs> with it. And it talks about women as well. Neil. Sally's the girl that I love dearly. Way, hey, bully in the alley. Sally's the girl that I spice dearly. Bully down the chin bow now. So help, help me, Bob. I'm bully in the alley. Way, hey, bully in the alley. Help me, Bob. I'm bully in the alley. Bully down the chin bow now. For seven long years I caught it, Sally. Way, hey, bully in the alley. All she did was dilly and dally. Bully down the chin bow now. So help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Way, hey, bully in the alley. Help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Bully down the chin bow now. <coughs> I left myself and I went to sailing. Way, hey, bully in the alley. Signed on a big ship, I went away. Bully down the ship, bow now. So help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Way, hey, bully in the alley. Help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Bully down the ship, bow now. If ever I get back, I'll marry little Sally. Way, hey, bully in the alley. Have six kids and live in Shimbon Alley. Bully down in Shimbo now. So help, help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Way, hey, bully in the alley. Help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Bully down in Shimbo now. I thought I heard the old man saying, Way, hey, bully in the alley. One more pull and we'll be laying, Bully down in Chimbo now. So help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Way, hey, bully in the alley. Help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Bully down in Chimbo now. Should bully in the alley, thank you, Nick. Third of the sailors' obsessions, which I've described as rock and roll. Earlier on, we had rock and roll the overboard. Quite what rock and roll originally meant, I don't think I want to go into. There are various series about it, some quite rude. But on most voyages, there was plenty of time, plenty of chance to be rock and roll overboard. Um, so this, this, this theme was really, of Shanties, was really about the realities of shipboard life. The dangers, the weather, hard labor in all sorts of weathers, harsh discipline, and poor food. So again, so there's two aspects to this and the song about it. One is a warning to other sailors, especially younger sailors, about some of the dangers they might face. Um, this, I'm pretty sure, didn't start life as a shanty. It was um, a recreational song, um, but I think it got converted into a shanty by having this chorus, we'll scrape her and we'll scrub her with holy stone and sand. That's, of course, referring to the way of cleaning the decks of a wooden sailing ship using a stone, a bit like a pumice stone, and sound, another job for the sailors. Um, Peter, would you do Newfoundland? Let maybe let, leave out the 
um, one, two, three, four, four thirty. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Now it's up a lot. I'll queue around the line. The bully boys of Liverpool, I'll have you to beware. Do you sail aboard a packet ship? Don't under each other's wear. But have a big monkey jacket already to your hand. For there's some cold nor'westers on the banks of Newfoundland. We'll scrape her and we'll scrub her. We'll fall in stone and sand. And we'll think of them cold nor'westers on the banks of Newfoundland. There was Jack Lynch from Palladich, Dick Murphy, and some more. I tell you, well, they suffered like hell on the way to Bounty Moor. Well, they pulled their gear in Liverpool and sailed as they did stand. And then blowed some coal nor'westers on the banks of Newfoundland. We'll scrape her and we'll scrub her with holy stolen sand. And we'll think of the cold nor'westers on the banks of Newfoundland. The mate used to on the forecastle so deck and loudly he did roar. Come wrap there in the early boys, we're bound for American shore. Go wash the blood off at their band's face and heed the feet the band. For oh, there goes some cold nor'westers on the banks of Newfoundland. We'll scrape our and we'll scrub out with holy stolen sand. And we'll think of the cold nor'westers on the banks of Newfoundland. And now we're off the hook, we boys, for the land's all white and snow. Soon we'll see the painter go and spend the night below. Around the docks, come down in flocks, and pretty girls will stand. Then it's more than me, the banks of you and We'll scrape her and we'll scrub her with all this stone and sand. I will think of the cold nor'westers on the banks of you and back. The other aspect of shipboard life was, I think I've gone too far, growling. Um, Shanti gave an opportunity for seamen to let off steam. It was generally not so much allowed, but they got away with singing rudely about the ship, about the uh, about the officers um, during Ashanti. So there were plenty to growl about food, um, poor equipment on the ship, low pay. Incompetent officers often came in for a lot of stick. They didn't mind ones who were disciplinarian but could do their job, but they were very rude about ones who couldn't. And Again, back to the discipline, a bosun too free with the cat. Um, the classic growling song is Leave Her, Johnny Leave Her. Traditionally, this was only ever sung at the very end of a voyage into your home port, just when you did the final pumping out of the ship or the using the capstan to walk the ship into dock. Um, but then it was most of the guys had received their pay the night before. It was too late for the officers to do anything about it, so they could be as rude as they liked to anyone. This, this one has got innumerable verses. Um, I asked Mick to suggest a couple, and I've added one or two more. So, Mick, leave her Johnny Lever. Oh, I don't know any of those. All right. Well, there are you can read them. <laughs> All oh, but signs was hard on the wages low. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. But now once for us, sure we'll go. And it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. For the voyage is done and the wind's so blow, and it's time for us to leave. 
Always holds I heard the old man say, Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Tomorrow you will get your pay, and it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. For the voyage is done and the winds don't blow. And it's time for us to leave her. Oh, a dollar a day is a jack shite's pay. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. For you're pumping all night and you're working all day. And it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. For the voyage is done and the winds don't blow. And it's time for us to leave her. All the wind was foul, all work, no pay. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. To the Liverpool dog from the Frisco Bay. And it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. All the voyage is done and the winds don't blow, and it's time for us to leave her. She was poverty stricken and parish weak. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. And the blooming crew is fever strict, and it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. All the voyage is done and the winds don't blow, and it's time for us to leave her. Well, I pray that we will never, well, I pray that we never more will see. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. A hungry bitch, the likes of she, and it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. For the voyage is done and the winds don't blow, and it's time for us to leave her. You've got one in. <laughs> no, a good shanty man can improvise his way through. No extra verses. You can't read and sing at the same time. <laughs> well, okay, I'll get next time. I'll get someone who can do both. <laughs> a bit of history again. Um, I called it the timeline of the shanty. The next question is to when shanties arose. Um, there are various bits in odd tracts talking about work songs on board ship in the 15th century. But for the next three centuries, there's very little. And people say there's no evidence. Well, absence of evidence doesn't mean evidence of absence. And I'm sure there was singing on ships. Most of the shanties we know today probably arose in the early 19th century. Um, one of the not very uh, good bits of evidence for this is how they referenced of contemporary events or events in living memory. For instance, there's quite a lot of chanties talking about Napoleon or Boney. And there's also two interesting chanties, obviously written after the um, Mexican-American War of 1846, um, that one of which talks about how General Taylor gained the day, and the next one, how his opponent Santa Ana gained the day at the Battle, Battle of Mont Il Rey. So there are events from the 19th century in there. What probably economically what happened is in the period of peace after the Napoleonic Wars, um, trade began expanding, it thanks partly to the Industrial Revolution. If trade grew, more ships were needed, faster ships and more complex ships. So again, there was an incentive among ship owners to work their crews harder and bring in chanters. And most of the chanters we know are from this period. Oh, failing. Ah. Probably this is thought to have arisen in the USA. Um, the time after the 
1812 war, uh, Britain and America, which I probably would characterize as a score draw. Nobody really won. Um, they, we were beaten in the odd battle, but the American invasion of Canada was repelled which is useful to know when you're talking to any American in all their worlds. Um, the, the, the American merchant marine was probably unrivaled at the beginning of that century. Um, certainly the British merchant navy was a bit moribund, frankly, partly because it was protected. Navigation laws, which weren't repealed till halfway through the century, really meant that trade between British and British Empire ports was confined to British ships, so there wasn't that much competition. The, the Yanks, however, um, were, were fighting for business and built often really very fast ships. So packet ships crossing the Atlantic, which would be carrying immigrants. There was obviously competition to make good passages there. And east to west, before the railroads were built, and well before the Panama Canal was built, the best way of getting to the eastern seaboard, the western seaboard, was go by ship. Okay, you had to go all the way around Cape Horn, but it was probably better than buying a horse and wagon and joining a wagon train and going across there. Um, so there was a, a tendency to timetable sailing, which really isn't something you can easily do with a sailing ship when you don't know what the weather is. And there was a premium put on speed and efficiency. So, for instance, you could predict that a ship would sail from New York on a Saturday and probably, what, six weeks, two months later, the people would be in San Francisco. Meant, really, the ships were what sailors called hard run. So they were worked very hard and the crew were very worked very hard. British seamen did not like these and they tend to criticise them Yankee bloodboats for the harsh discipline. So one suspects that the British seamen were looked on as a bit, a bit soft compared with the, with the locals. Um, and that period really was sort of the zenith of US shipbuilding. They were building very fast, um, very fine line wooden ships. This is one of the most famous builders, Donald Mackay of Boston. And that's the last ship he's built, Glory of the Seas. She was wood, but she was very fast indeed. And she, they, they ships weren't really surpassed in seed until the tea clippers came along. And some of the records they made for day sailing, if they are correct, are quite remarkable. So the Americans really were ahead of the game there. People reckon that the age of the shanty was what? About 1830 to 1860, 1870. Quite honestly, I query that because steam didn't really start to offer major competition for sailing ships until about 1870. And you'd imagine that the answer competition from steam would stimulate the ship owners to work their ships and their crews harder. So they did need shanties still. Um, 1870s, the, the shanty and decline, was it really? The sailing ships got larger and more complex and probably needed more crew and worked them harder. This thing's an exception. It's the, I think, the only five masted sh ship, ship, forward ship ever built, uh, the German Pusen. And if you look on board her, there's a lot of ropes to pull. Okay, they've got um, mechanical uh, Jarvis winches to help us on the brakes. <coughs> But there's still plenty of work for sailors to do. So I don't think the shanty was redundant until considerably later. There's an anecdote about um, a ship in Liverpool, the Cambrian Monarch, an iron ship in the Mersey in the 1890s, and somebody went on board and was very pleased to hear the sailors singing a roving as they walked around the capstan. Interesting factoid about uh, Liverpool ships, many of which were owned in North Wales, and the owners came from the um, northwest tip of North, North Wales, Anglesey, Carnarvon. And of course, they recruited local people from their local villages. And they were reckoned to be very good singers because, of course, they were used to singing in chapel on Sundays. And one suspects every Sunday there probably was a church service on board Welsh ships. There are, there are also Welsh shanties. I don't know anybody, but um, apparently there are. Looking now at another vexed question, which is the musical origin of shanties. What is suspected to have happened is the initial ones were songs that 
the sailors had brought with them from home, who were probably mainly from British Isles or were British settlers in USA and Canada. But they were strongly influenced by music and things they heard in the Gulf ports of New, of, in the Gulf of Mexico ports. What Hugo described as the shanty mar, where sailors got together, gentlemen especially, and swapped songs and also picked them up from the people ashore. Now, I'm not entirely sure, am I politically correct to talk about black music? I'm going to do it anyway. Um, there was much contact with black stevedores who would be loading the ships with cotton. Now, before um, emancipation, they would be, be slaves, but they all would be carrying on working after emancipation. There were West Indian sailors on British ships after slavery was abolished in the British Empire. And this is a fact that I almost wish I didn't know, actually. Um, much of the work on plantations was needed to be done in the summer. There was less work to do in the winter. So the slave owners, the good capitalists, what did they do? They hired their slaves out to work on ships. I think this was probably confined to US coastal ships, because otherwise, if they went to ports where there was no slavery, the guys would probably have a good chance to hop it. So there were plenty of, of contact between guys on the, on, the, on the ships and guys ashore. After emancipation, black people had a choice, ex-slaves, carry on working on the plantation if they could, drift north, industry there, or go on board ship. And a lot of them did, and the British and American <coughs> ships had black and white crews. Um, of course, racism being what it was, they weren't mixed. So there would be a black watch and a white watch, and they really wouldn't meet. They'd both be working alternately there. They were known as sort of checkerboard crews. Another influence to riverboat to some, the sea shanties comes from um, song, song on riverboats. For instance, you can tell by the, by the titles, the shanty, roll the wood pile down, probably originated on the Mississippi, the wood piles being the piles of timber that were waiting for uh, the early steamboats to, to use. Shawnee Town is, comes from the Ohio, and Hog Eye Man is believed to be a type of vessel barge found in rivers in Tennessee. They were borrowed and adapted by shanty singers. Um, a slight digression, um, question we're often asked, did the Royal Navy sing shanties? Most authors say no, never. Some will allow that drunken sailor was possibly allowed. Well, you think of crews on naval ships were probably adequate to do most of the jobs that was required. And the other point is that growling would not be tolerated. Growling and complaining about the ship or the crew, or the, the officers especially, would almost be tantamount to mutiny. So it just didn't happen. However, there's one song that has naval origins that was apparently sometimes used as a shanty. And it's probably one you may remember. I remember singing this along with an old radio at, um, while I was in primary school. Um, the influence of Cecil Sharp was still around and uh, we got to sing folk songs like this. It's a very old song, it's at least pre-middle of the 18th century. So Peter, would you like to give us Spanish ladies? Farewell and adieu to you Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu to you ladies of Spain. For we have been on a third time to old England. Let me hope in a short time to see you again. We'll rant and we'll roar like true British sailors. We'll rant and we'll roar all on the salt sea until we strike soundings in the channel of From Moshan to Silly is 35 feet. We heave our ship to with a wind to lose the soundness. We heave our ship to. Just like serving so clear, 
was born in five fathoms to the white sandy bottom and straight up the channel. Oh, they both did stay. We'll rant and we'll roar like two British sailors. We'll rant and we'll roar all on the sun sea until we strike sounding in the channel of holy. From ocean to silly is 35 leagues. Well, the first land we made it is for the Dublin. Let's rain head off the bus. Start Portland and White. We sail by in Beachy by fair light and Dover, and then bore away for the South Pole and Light. We'll rant and we'll roar like true British sailors. We'll rant and we'll roar all along the salt sea until we strike soundings in the channel of Old England from Russian to Silly. Is thirty-five leagues. The signal was made for the grand fleet to anchor all in the towns that night for to lie. They stand by your stoppers, let go your shank fingers, pull up your blue garnet, let tacks and streets fly. We'll rant and we'll roar. My true British sailors will rant and will roar all on the salt sea until we strike soundings in the channel of Holy. From Ocean to Silly is 35 feet. Now let every man pop down his full bottle. Let every man drink off his full glass. For oh, we will be jolly and drunk melancholy and drink to the health of each true hearted lass. We'll rant and we'll roar like true British sailors. We'll rant and we'll roar all on the salt sea until we strike soundings in the channel of Old England. From ocean to the silly is a divine me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Does anybody else remember singing at primary school? Yeah. Just I'm old. Hold on. <laughs> Last aspect of it, really. Um, cultural side, shanty singing today. Obviously, there was a major revival of interest in traditional music in the 50s and 60s. It's where I first got interested. Um, but I can tell you that shanty singing is alive and well, surviving as a vehicle for participative singing. This, this, it's even survived the sort of decay, or not decay, the, the closing down of various folk clubs with various shanty festivals around the country that are usually very well attended, like this one at Harwich. Now, like a lot of folk events, folk music, and folk dance events. These are very much grassroots events. They happen because of some hard work by a few individuals who in some cases take quite severe financial risk by putting it on. The participants are mostly amateurs who might get a few travel expenses, a recombination, and maybe a few beers. A lot of people sing just because they like doing it. And they probably like the beer as well. But as you'll see from this, not all just it, shanty singers are not only bearded old men. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've heard of the Fisherman's Friends? Well, despite having some best selling records and having a good old British feel good movie made about them, basically they're just a, guy, a bunch of guys, fishermen, and other people from the town who meet every week on the um, seafront at Port Isaac to sing basically and collect the shandies. They're just doing it for the sheer love of it. Not quite the same league as Fisherman's Friends, but shanties can be heard in South London. And there are a group of us, several people who are here tonight, who meet regularly in a pub or in someone's back garden to sing shanties and do the occasional performance. So we're not dead yet. Um, this may be controversial, but it seems to me 
when you're practicing those shanties, they are to me not just as they're good songs to sing, but they're almost pure folk music. No one knows who made them up. They're handed down orally from one singer to another. They weren't until end of last century actually written down. And then the process has been handed down. They're often changed. They're modified. They might be improved. Sometimes they're actually sanitized. But it's a it, it's a living folk process. And often they were set to music that was borrowed from entirely different traditions. So I think basically the shanty is an art form to be cherished. Very quick note about sources acknowledgement. Stan Hugill, um, his Shanty in the 70s is probably about the most useful book um, available on Shanties. He was mostly basically a compiler and a, and a commentator. He claims to have done, been a Bob Square himself as a singer. Um, the the Garth Pool was probably the last British square rig ship sailing commercially. Um, I've got to say, it's a bit like an antiquarian book, really. He's collecting things from people he met on his voyages. He often gives multiple versions. To be honest, it wasn't sort of, it isn't very sort of rigorous academically, to be honest, but he did a good job in compiling it. Probably more rigorous with Cecil Sharp with his English folk chanties. And of course, I'll back to our friend John Short. There was a book published about him a few years ago, um, which really will tell you more than you probably want to know about John Short's life. <laughs> Tom Brown, the guy who wrote it, you've also you've got all his chanties in the back of the book. But the guy who did it, I think, was. Speaking as a maritime historian, being obsessive myself, he actually tried to trace every voyage John Short had done, which is a monumental task. Um, most of the ones are included in the thing. But acknowledgements, people I need to acknowledge most of the people who came along to sing tonight. Neil, Peter. <laughs> You, ben, and to thank you for all of you who actually joined in tonight. Thanks very much indeed. Now then, um, well, let's just have a look here. Ian Stafford has a question. All oh, right. Oh, yeah. You'd like to see all this? He's here. He's in the ether. Oh, he's there. He's it's there. Uh, right here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> These shanty related mostly to North Atlantic. While we're leaving for Botany Bay, might be commercial. Are there references to Eastern Suez? Um, almost certainly, yes. Um, there are lots of shanties that talk about yellow girls. Um, I think the the thing is, of course, the trade to Australia lasted longer um, in sailing ships than it did across the Atlantic. Um, and I think there was probably more competition on the Atlantic for passages. Um, I'm sure there was for, for Australia as well. To be honest, I can't think of any specific ones about Australia. Can anybody? South Australia. South Australia. Thank you. Yes. So yes, there are. <laughs> Any other comments? Spoken word or yes. some? Yes. Are there any not anglophone chapters with uh, in Frisia, for instance? Another yes. There definitely are. Norway, Holland, Poland. Um, I think most chapters have had most nations have had seafarers in sale. Same chapters. But the Harriet Shanty Festival should come along, you will probably hear groups from around Europe singing there. There's also um, a very rude shanty in a uh, fake German accent. Go on then. My father was a Dutchman, bit my ya, ya, ya. And it goes on. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Move on. <laughs> yeah. They had more on board, didn't they? No. 
I'm not my mother left me this. They'd like to have, and they often sing about it, but the cat don't think it's grog today, but dream on basically. Grog was mainly a uh, naval tradition. In uh, fact, don't, we don't think chanting the song, song on naval ship. Thank you, that's brilliant. Um, do you have any, do you ever found diary references to people making, say, the Lancet Crossing? As passengers oh, yeah. hearing the same and singing, yeah, well, which is very alien, then it's sort of like yeah. maritime songs yeah. to the landsman. There definitely were a lot of books I can show you the bibliography if you wish. No, no, just <laughs> yeah. moved on. But uh, some of the uh, mining adventure books have, have, have got a lot of that. The interesting thing was they reckon when they were um, on passenger ships. The shanty singers actually moderated their languages, <laughs> not to upset the passengers. But there's certainly plenty of references in the literature to the sailors the singing. Not always wrote down what they did sing, but they certainly were were were, um, were mentioned of it in, in letters and, and diaries. Sir, so, this is a really strange bit. By the time I get to see you, you know, it's a bit more limited, but um, I was out on the East Coast and we were running. An observation from Virginia Preston. Thanks. I've learned in some shanties, mostly from John McGee and, um, and the unthanks, very good group. And I was joining from home. John McGee published a short article last year on the black origins of sea shanties. That would be interesting. I, I'm very interested in that. Yes, thank you. Who was it? Was it Virginia. Preston. Virginia. Okay, thank you, Virginia. Was it my, okay, yeah. The occupations, women, as a great deal of women, they were all Yeah, they were all Turkish. Scribes, as Irish. Yes. It's and how does that intersect the folk tradition? They must come together at some point and then they die, die worse. Um, very much, I mean, whaling was an, was an option for, for sailors. Um, I left my son and went to sail, left my son and went to whaling. So there was much crossover between them. I suspect that the whaling got separated when it became very much concentrated on certain ports, north in Scotland, for instance, and the whole of it. I suspect then whaling songs developed. Greenland whale fisheries, um, 
Yeah, and there's some good New Zealand songs. Yeah, the weather man. I wasn't going to mention the weather man. Too popular. Well, yeah, but you know, my friend, yeah, Jeff on there. Um, if you go down into Picton from Wellington, just inside the heads of Picton, yeah. who's on song, the old whaling station is just in there and still on song. Yeah, it's, it's funny that it's still there. Yeah. I think you have to distinguish between songs that really were sung so, so by sailors and um, more than wasn't written as likely. I mean, mm -hmm. some great songs, Little Pot Stove, which is about a rail factory that was in the Antarctic. Wonderful song. And the Hump Bat Wire. Great. Um, what's her name? Nick Jones. 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 Was it my imagination we had some competition outside, somebody singing and trying to yeah. trying to outdo us? Oi! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I think it's pretty clear that they didn't uh, they didn't outdo us. I think uh, uh, Roy did himself, uh, as did this when he came uh, and, and, and distributed the, the, the singing that was really, uh, very much appreciated. Um, the whole package was appreciated. So I think we should express that in a different way.